Hmm. I wonder how many sales we've had. Let me sum up quantity sold real quick. What if we can spot these issues before these situations? Hey guys, this is Basant from Simple Sheets. In this video, we will learn the most common issues you can spot in your data. Then, we will practice the simplest ways to detect these issues together. It is important to fix these issues for consistent, reliable, and sound business results. When you fix your data, you can also use it for advanced analytics and machine learning in the later stages. Usually, for each data type, you have a group of things to check for in your data. We've curated these guidelines from our experience with our clients. First of all, for all data, we need to make sure that there are no empty entries. And why is that? Because software like Excel does not understand what empty entries mean, and usually they cause issues in your calculations. So make sure you check these empty cells and replace them with sensible values. For example, if an order is cancelled and the price is empty, then we should probably remove this or cancelled order from our analysis. For the numeric type, we need to first make sure that all the values in the column are numbers. For example, we can't have the number 12 written as text. It's going to cause issues. We also need to make sure that the range of the values makes sense. For example, does it make sense to have a negative price in your purchase history? Probably not. In this case, we need to contact other teams and make sure we all agree on what the negative price is. Perhaps it's the price of a cancelled order or the price of a returned order. We need to make sure what it means and remove it from our analyses if needed. Next, we have text in a specified known pattern. For example, we want to represent the room in a particular building. We can do so with two characters. The first could be the number of the floor. The second could be the first letter of the type of the room. 2L can stand for second floor lab. We need to make sure that such data appears in the specified format. Next, we have categorical text. This means that the values come from a predefined selection of values. For example, continents, countries, or states. We need to make sure there are no typos or different representations of the same entity. Take, for example, New York. If the data has New York spelled out and n.y and n.y. then we have three different values for New York. Excel does not understand that these three all correspond to the same entity, New York. We also need to make sure that we have all the categories we need in the data. If the category is absent, this probably means that the, maybe the data is not complete, it's not refreshed, so make sure that you have the values you need. Finally, we have date time. Date time represents a calendar date, or a time in the day, or a combination of both. We need to first check, are all the dates in the same format? For instance, dates could be in the format day slash month slash year. However, there could be some values where we have the format day-month-year. This is problematic. People may even spell out the date, like 1st of March. This is also problematic. After we've checked the validity of the format, we next check if the date range makes sense. For instance, if your company started sales in 2020, then we cannot find sales in 2004. Perhaps... The IT team have this date as a placeholder for orders that are cancelled. You need to investigate why do you have dates that are in illogical range. To spot issues in your data, I highly recommend you go column by column, identifying the data type, then checking against the possible issues that we described in our guidelines. I also encourage you to question the source of these issues. Why did they appear? Is it due to poor data entry? Is it due to a lack of agreement across different units in the organization? 
Finding the reason will help you make better sound analyses and establish better data entry rules. Ready to test yourself? Then open up the exercise sheet and try to spot as many issues as you can in the data. Try to also think what could be the causes of these issues. Pause the video now and then come back so we can do the exercise together to fill in your knowledge gaps. So let's go through our sheet column by column and figure out the issues together. The date column should have consistent format. So in the first one, we can see the format is day slash month slash year. So this is problematic because we have dashes instead of slashes. We also here have text, which is not consistent with our format. Is there a better way to spot these issues without relying on your eyes? Yes, there is. We can use filters. So I'm going to apply a filter on all of the columns because it's actually going to help us. So now let's check the values of date. So as you can see, Excel automatically grouped them by year and then by month. And then, oh, there are some outliers here. So this is a not correct format. This is also not in correct format. So Excel automatically identified that these are not consistent with the format. This is also a good opportunity to check do the consistent formats make sense. So are all our sales in 2024 and do they come from these four months? From our discussion with other teams, we learned that orders are IDs starting with 1001. So let's check if all of our numbers start at 1001 or greater than that. So what we can do actually is to use conditional formatting. We can check numbers that are less than 1001 because these numbers would be problematic. So we don't have numbers that are less than 1001. So order orders is good. Now for product. So let's look at product. From our discussions with the sales team, they tell us that product is a P appended by three digits. The simplest way to check if that's true is to also look at filters. We look at anything above P because anything above P means that it did not start with a P. It started with a character that's either a number or a letter less than P. And then we look down and we see if anything follows P's. So L, M, N, O, P, Q. So if we have something starting with Q, that is also problematic. We need to make sure that everything starts with a P, and that's the simplest way to check. For product name, we have a catalog of products. We need to make sure that the products here are what we're selling, and we need to make sure that every product is represented in one way. For example, gadget B here, we shouldn't find any other gadget B, for example, gadget B with B as a lowercase. So to us, these look like unique products and Yes, these are the products we sell, so we're good. If there are any missing products or any new products that you did not expect, you must discuss that with other teams. Category of product as well should be unique. So we have unique categories here. They do represent the product categories we're expecting, so we're good. Now, let's check for quantity. So first of all, quantity must be numerical. How do we check if there are non-numerical types? We can open the filter and scroll to the bottom because numbers are usually ranked at the beginning and after that we have text. So here we have the text 12. So 12 is not numerical. We also need to check if the numbers make sense. So for quantities sold, they must be greater than zero. You cannot physically sell anything that is zero or less. For that, let's do conditional formatting. So control shift bottom to get you the end of the data set. Let's look at those purchases that are less than one because that wouldn't make sense. So we do have this purchase, zero. Does that mean that the order was canceled? Discuss with that with your teams. Again, you must discuss everything with other teams so that you all are aligned on the same interpretation of your data. You have to agree on what different values mean so you can draw similar conclusions that are harmonious for the business. Unit price is also numerical. Let's check if we have any values at the bottom. So they're all numbers, we're good. We also need to make sure that the price is non-zero and it's not negative. It means to be greater than zero. 
because I'm paying money. That's what we expect. So let's do conditional formatting again. And let's look at those that are below zero. So here we have some negative prices, which also were answered this question with other teams. So total sales, same thing. It should be greater than zero. Again, we apply conditional formatting and we check those less than zero. And it looks like we don't have any negative values. But notice another issue. Why here do we have negative one as unit price and quantity six, but the price is 290? The price should be the product of six, which is quantity, and negative one, which is unit price. So this also requires a discussion with your team. Total sales should be computed from the product of quantity and unit price. So also make sure that the relationship among your columns is consistent and makes sense. Now, customer ID should begin with a C, based on our discussions with sales as well. Should begin with a C, followed by three digits, similar to product. Now you know the trick. Let's see anything that's above C and below C. So here we have two numbers that are above C. Perhaps someone manually entered these IDs for purchases and forgot to add the C. Finally, let's look at region. Our teams told us that these should consist of north, south, east, and west. Not, not less, not more. So do we have all these values? And are they represented in the same way? Yes, we do. We have the four values and each one is appearing only once. What if someone entered West with a typo? Excel will not detect that the two different representations of West are all actually one thing. In this situation, with categories, I recommend that you have drop-down lists. When you have drop-down lists, you restrict people to choose from particular values that you previously selected. So that's it for this video. I hope you've learned new concepts about spotting issues in your data. To solidify these concepts, I recommend that you practice with an Excel sheet at work. Try to spot issues. Ask your teammates, why do we have these issues? Perhaps you're gonna learn something new. If you've liked this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.